What's going on guys? Hope everyone's having a great day today. Welcome to the channel. This is the first video of the channel and don't really know which way I'm going to go with this channel. I mean, it'll probably mostly just be Forerunner mods, uh, basic mods, car mods, whatnot. Um, but we'll get into all sorts of different stuff. This is my 2007 Toyota 4Runner V8 four-wheel drive. I bought this car about a year ago. Uh, this video is just going to be basic walk around, a little bit in depth, not too crazy. Uh, just get into some of the mods I've done so far and maybe what I'm planning to do in the future. Um, so we'll go ahead and start up front here and done just some basic uh, blacking out of emblems and whatnot. Nothing crazy pops out in the front, uh, but I did do a Baja Designs fog light mod. So those are the Baja Designs Squadron Sports. Um, they make a kit. It's not quite for the 4th Gen 4Runner, but you can modify it slightly to make it work. Uh, it's pretty clean. I need to do a little bit of touch-up work in there. Uh, just repaint this area. Um, kind of washed out after I did the mod originally. Um, but yeah, nothing too crazy up here until we get underneath. Uh, otherwise, I just installed these LED turn signal bulbs uh, the other day. Not sure how I like them yet. They are phenomenally bright, but they do have a slight hyper flashing issue. Uh, they are supposed to have built in resistors, but they haven't worked perfectly thus far. So might have to look into that a little bit and see if I can fix that. These are the Baja Designs Squadron Pros. They are awesome lights, highly recommended. They're mounted on the um, CBI off-road ditch brackets. Great product, haven't had any problems with them. Install's not the easiest thing in the world, not that hard though. Just, you know, little knuckle busting, getting everything lined up, squared away. But definitely worth it. I love these lights. Anytime you're off-road, you, these are really like more than you'd ever need for the kind of driving I do, but I like overkill when it comes to lighting, you know, given the uh, fog light mod. Those are more than you'd ever need, and that's the lower tier of this light. Moving down the side here, uh, see I did a little bit of emblem blacking. It is a limited. Um, we'll get into suspension mods a little bit later, uh, but yeah, it is limited. And these are the tube steps off of the Sport Edition. Uh, bought them off some guy. Thought that they look a little bit cleaner than the running boards that these 4Runners come with. Um, eventually, I would like to get some RCI uh, sliders, CBI, one of those brands. Um, really do like the RCI ones, though. Tough, solid sliders. But I don't do that crazy off-roading right now, uh, so down the line maybe. I did like the courtesy lighting that came on the original running boards though with the limited. So I went ahead and added some rock lights to these. It's kind of hard to see, it's a little light out here, but I just took some little rock lights and bolted them up underneath there, tapped it in to the cir existing circuit. So that was pretty easy. Um, it's nice to have when you unlock the car, open the door, whatnot, you can see around the car a little bit uh moving back hard to see in this light right now but i did add a nice matte black american flag vinyl sticker there um i don't know i just i've always liked the way they look i've seen them on plenty of fifth gens it's not as popular on the fourth gen i don't think but they're definitely out there i think got those off ebay uh by the way i will try to link all of the product links all the products I used down in the description below. Uh, moving back, just a little TRD sticker, of course, gotta represent. Um, emblem blacking, nothing crazy back here. I did black out this bar. I just don't like the uh, completely color matched look. I like a little bit of contrast here and there. Uh, just rocking a little basic D-ring and the hitch. This car, for some reason, didn't come with a hitch receiver on it. Uh, it was set up for it, uh, but 
for whatever reason, it was taken off at some point by a previous owner, I'm pretty sure. So I got this off of the forerunner I had before this that I ended up totaling in an accident and installed this, took the bumper off. It's kind of funny because this is an 07 to 09 for, or sorry, this is an 07, which is the later model year generation of this car. And so this is off of a 04 forerunner and it doesn't quite fit perfectly. So it's really hard to stick the um, locking pins in there, but I made it work. You might've noticed uh, these are some Cali raised LED uh, floodlights that I put on here. They are pretty nice. Um, I just wanted a little bit extra lighting when I was, you know, in reverse, especially having the camera up there. It's nice to light up the surrounding area a little bit for that camera because this is a limited, did come with a reverse camera. Uh, but yeah, nothing too crazy. So let's get into suspension and then we will look around inside the car. So as far as suspension goes, I didn't want to break the bank and go crazy with it. I did tons and tons of research on this. Um, probably spent like six months when I was getting serious about buying it, trying to decide what I wanted. Uh, and I heard nothing but great reviews on Old Man Emu. So I ended up going with Old Man Emu, and I believe these are the 885 front coil struts. Um, it's the, the mid-tier, mid-rigidity, uh, whichever one that is. I believe it's 885. I'll link it down in the description. But, you know, with the V8, I wanted to have a little bit more rigid, support a little bit more weight. Uh, and then eventually, ideally, I'd like to get a bumper, you know, somewhere down the line. Nice steel bumper. And figured those should be able to support that long term and what else we got down here we got spc upper control arms that definitely helps out with the three inches of lift i did end up adding the top plate spacer onto these ome struts so you know you definitely are getting out of the ability to run factory alignment on these forerunners once you get into the three inch territory so I went ahead and installed those and been pretty happy with them since. They definitely allow for great uh, suspension travel. Haven't had any issues. I did add some spider tracks, wheel spacers down in there, kind of hard to see. But been pretty happy with those. They just give the ride a little bit more stance. Obviously, these wheels look a little silly on this to me. At least they do. They're not quite as big as I'd like for the amount of lift that I did end up putting on this. So eventually somewhere down the line, I'll do wheel and tire package. Um, probably beef these up to 32, 33 inch. I think they're sitting at about 30 right now. So I think a couple inches would do it some good. Uh, just get a little bit more ground clearance, a little bit more, you know, off-road capability, a little bit more stance and go from there. As far as the rear suspension, I went with Toytec Superflex coils. I just thought it would be a little bit um, nicer than the Old Man Emu. I've heard that they can be pretty harsh, pretty stiff. So these Toytec have a little bit more flex in them. Um, so I thought, why not? I am not sure if it's related to the Toytec, but the ride ended up squatting very slightly in the back. And it might just be because the whole three inches in the front didn't match up too well with the toy tech in the back since it wasn't OME. Don't know, but you know, might try to fix that down the line. It's not that noticeable, but there's a very slight squat in the rear and I'm not about that kind of stance life personally. So might have to change that up a little bit. Uh, just got some poly bushings in there for the rear sway bar. I'm not running a front sway bar, by the way. It was pretty stiff with these OME struts and I've been happy with it out it. I do a lot of highway driving. It's, if you get up to like 80, 90 miles an hour on the interstate and you're doing any bends, it's a little sketchy, but most day-to-day -day highway driving, no problems. Um, yeah, I don't mind it. So let's get into what I've got underneath as far as armor goes. So up underneath this old girl, I got a nice RCI skid plate. It is the 
newer model, so it accommodates a diff drop pretty well. I did put a Toy Tech diff drop on there. I believe it's a three quarter inch. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I did put a diff drop just to accommodate the axles a little bit, uh, you know, with three inches of lift. The CBs are, <laughs> they don't look too stressed, but I recently replaced one and because I had a bad one when I got the car. And they still seem to like to puke their guts out. I'm not really too sure why that is. But, you know, what are you going to do? Replace a CV. That is pretty much all I have up front as far as armor goes. Like I said, I don't do any crazy off-roading right now. Maybe down the line, you know, when I get another vehicle. It's a daily drive. But this is my daily driver, so I didn't want to get too crazy with it. Not off the bat. Cars can be a money pit, man. But back here, I do have an RCI diff skid. You know, I came with a little bit of rust underneath this car. Not too bad as far as these 4Runners go. I've seen some that are just absolutely horrendous. The 04 that I had before this was bought at auction just kind of, you know, to mess around with when I was in college. Just get around, around town and whatnot. And that thing was horrible. Uh, you could pretty much push your finger through parts of the frame and it was just deteriorating. So the accident was kind of the best thing for it. Get it off the road and uh, get a little bit safer. But yeah, the armor underneath, I just wanted some basic stuff to start out with. That skid is real solid. It's nice. You don't have to pull it off to do the oil change with the V8 because there is the uh, oil filter up on the other side here underneath right about there so you can get under there pull that out without having to drop the skid which is pretty convenient um, and the diff skid I just wanted in case I you know end up hitting anything that is pretty much the lowest part of the car underneath and don't want to damage that that's a costly repair so let's get into some interior stuff all right so when I bought this it's in pretty good condition um, been lived in about a year now by me it did have some slight seat cracking uh, it's pretty common for these nothing crazy though just a little seat wear and tear otherwise the back was in really good shape can't complain really uh, leather was pretty nice just basic wear and tear years of scratches I mean it's not the newest car so what are you gonna do can't complain about the price all right, so probably the best thing I've done with this car is WeatherTech floor mats. You, you, it just doesn't get any better than being able to get in the car and not worry about getting shit everywhere from your feet being outside all day. So these are awesome. Highly recommend WeatherTech. I know there's some other brands out there. I just went with some tried and true. Uh, I've seen others with these and they've had nothing but good things to say about them so just wanted to go with the weather tech and i only went with the front driver passenger and rear i didn't do one in the cargo area didn't that didn't really bother me too much i didn't really feel it was necessary personally so i just went with those and been very happy with it very easy to take out clean and move on with your day um so up here got a couple minor mods going on Voltage meter, added that just to kind of regulate what I'm doing as far as uh, current draw with my lights. I do have a few external lights and, you know, when they those are on, definitely brings voltage down a little bit. The alternator on these aren't amazing, so yeah, just wanted to make sure I wasn't draining too much battery. I have a traction control mod here, turn off the traction control. It works pretty well i mean it's not too different from just you know turning on the transfer case the center diff lock there but i don't mind having you know a little insurance here so you just flip that switch turns off variable slip control turns off traction control bsc um i don't know why it says the brakes on it doesn't you know break it all it's probably because it disables abs as well and it's just nice when you're off-road because it definitely does 
uh, cut power when you are rolling through certain types of terrain and you think you can slam on the gas and power through and Toyota thinks differently that you need to go at about 1000 rpm and zero miles per hour and crawl out of it so I just did that to make sure I could uh, you know turn that off if I ever wanted to let's see what else so this switch here is aftermarket looks very factory this is based on a J forerunner mod J top forerunners I can link his stuff in the description if anyone's in interested but this is for the DRL mod so that I can keep those on even when the headlights are on this basically keeps them on all the time in the middle they are completely off and if I flip it down that's just the auto function how it would be if it came from the factory so I like to have that just so I can run those when my headlights are on. Uh, what else we got going on here? I did relocate the Rio stat. Uh, I just stuffed it in behind here. It does have to be plugged in because if it is not, then the uh, dash will be as dim as possible. You can't set it to be high, unplug it, and then hope it'll stay that way it doesn't work for some reason so I just stuffed it in behind there I never adjusted it anyway so just got it out of the way uh, wanted to retain the seat positions just convenient for me you know not too many other people drive my car but when they do I like to get it back to how I had it uh, might ditch the rear side curtain airbag disable uh, for something else down the line but uh, I don't know don't know if it's completely necessary or not over here on the steering column, I did add a switch. This is to control those auxiliary reverse lights. Um, and I wired it up to a double throw switch. So right now it's set up in basically an auto function. So whenever I put the car in reverse, they will automatically turn on. If I leave it there, they will not come on at all. If I put it on two, they will come on anytime, even if the vehicle's off, which is pretty convenient. So. They're pretty bright for what they are. They weren't too expensive and definitely gives me a little bit more light back there. So pretty happy with them. Moving a little bit further in here, uh, I did do the map light mod. So whenever the doors are open, map lights will come on. It's kind of dim in here if you don't do that. I don't know why this was not a Toyota feature from the start. Um, I do plan on replacing the sunglass holder with a switch panel a 3d printed one that i got from some guy online and holds four switches and i'll probably put a little switch so i can turn that feature off just in case you know i'm sitting here with the door open working on something don't want that to drain because any of the doors open those will come on you know if you're tailgating it gets a little bit annoying whatnot up there got the good old easy pass of course living in northern virginia if you don't have one i, I don't know what you are doing with your life it just wouldn't make sense all right got the dash cam up there pretty decent dash cam recently installed this been pretty happy with it so far shoots uh almost 4k i want to say don't know don't quote me on it i can link it in the description if anyone's interested uh nothing else too crazy up here i do have you know a couple different uh, patches and whatnot, mostly just things I like. A couple products that are on the car. I got some RCI there. Got the Rago. You'll see that later. Uh, yeah, nothing crazy. Oh, yeah, I did put some rad rubber fender liners on there outside the car in the engine bay right behind the wheels. Would highly recommend doing that. The factory ones were very old and tired and crusty, and you could crack them in half just by looking at them, basically. So definitely worth the upgrade there. Check them out. Rad rubber design. Uh, okay, got a head unit installed. It's a Pioneer AVH X390BS, I think. You can link it down below. Pretty happy with it. Uh, side note, something that not a ton of people know about these Limiteds. If you are running the JBL sound system, if they came with the JBL sound system rather, before you replace the head unit, uh, some audio shops might know this, some might not. If you're getting really terrible quality after you replace the head unit, it's probably because you did not take the factory head unit, crank the volume all the way up, 
crank all of the amplifier settings, treble, mid-range, bass, and whatnot, crank all of those up before you remove that head unit. If you don't, something happens with the amp to where it doesn't necessarily work with new head units, um, unless it was maxed out before. I don't know. I was getting really terrible bass, not great mid-range, and as soon as I did that, put the old one back in, cranked everything up, sounded way better. So definitely do that. Uh, what else we got going on here? <clears throat> if you don't have one of these and your Forerunner, you should get one. If you don't have any Ram Ball mounts or anything, I've thought about doing like a Ram Ball mount over here for my phone, but uh, I've really enjoyed having it right here. Real nice to mess with directions and whatnot while you're driving, music, pretty easy, you know, uh, pretty convenient. I have a couple switches here. Ignore this ghetto-ness. This is for a USB port that's kind of crapping out on me. I got another one I just ordered the other day, so I'll link that in the description. If anybody knows of a really good brand to stick in there, let me know. Uh, the only ones I can ever really find are pretty cheap Chinese-made LED or not LEDs, USBs off of Amazon. Um, so if there's a high quality option out there, let me know about it. I would love to use that. So this is hooked up to nothing right now. I used to have a little 20 inch bar on the front of the car that I removed. Uh, this is for the ditch lights, Squadron Pros. Uh, just basic switch off Amazon, no problems with it. And the fog lights are retained on the factory switch i've thought about switching that because they can be kind of weird with inspections virginia so i had to unplug those last time i went just so that um you know inspector didn't start messing with it those stayed on while my high beams were on i've done the fog light mod so you can keep the high beams on while the fog lights are on technically that's not legal in virginia but you know i only do it on back roads and whatnot and it's just convenient to have so, yeah, I don't know if that would be an issue for the inspector, but I went ahead and unplugged mine, and I just keep it on the factory switch because it's pretty convenient while you're driving if you just want to use the fog lights. But, yeah, pretty happy with that so far. Uh, right here you can see... <laughs> these, are, these have always been kind of funny to me growing up. I thought they were tacky, but... If I'm wearing like some sweatpants or whatnot and I leave my phone in my pocket, it always falls out there and you know, it's just a pain to get in down behind these seats. So I think I got these off Wish. They were like maybe 10 bucks, maybe not even. Um, I just say TRD cause why not? And you know, they just fit in between the seat and the little gap there and they definitely work for what they're supposed to. So been pretty happy with those. <laughs> Also, went a little crazy on Wish and got these little covers for door, hinge lock, whatever that is. Just stuck them on there and, you know, adds a little flair to the rig. Can't complain about them. That's, they're a couple bucks. Moving to the back, nothing too crazy in the middle there. So we'll move into the back cargo area. There's a little bit more going on in here. Excuse all the mess, got my work stuff with me. Um, this is where most of the mods occurred. So I went ahead and threw a Rego storage panel on. Um, been pretty happy with it. I bought one that was not powder coated or anything, just painted it myself, saved a little bit of money that way. They're not cheap <laughs> to begin with, but you know, I just wanted a little bit more storage back here that wasn't necessarily on the ground or in bins and whatnot. And I've been real happy with it. You know, just keep a fire extinguisher handy. Can never hurt. Got just some basic tools, med kit, and, you know, just miscellaneous stuff hung up on there. Been pretty useful. Got some extra lighting back here um, in case I need it while I'm working back here in the cargo area. This switch plate. I installed, um, ran a pretty heavy gauge wire from the engine bay and the battery all the way back here. And now I have some power. So there is a fuse block behind this. I can add a couple more devices on it. Um, 
right now I only have these four things working off of it. I can add a couple more things. Um, not the easiest mod to do. I mean, it's not hard, but you do have to take off all this side paneling and it's just kind of tedious, takes a while. Um, but definitely worth it in the long run. I would recommend it. There's a little bit about that on my Instagram. If you want to check that out, I think I go into a little bit more depth there. If anybody's curious, let me know and I can walk you through a little bit more extensively. Um, got some recovery gear in there, just some miscellaneous crap, bunch of random crap in there, nothing too important. Uh, I do have the sub. If I did not have the subwoofer, if this was not the limited, if it didn't have the JBL, I would have probably utilized that area because people with the, I think the sport edition still has that cargo compartment area in there. Um, that'd be a great place to wire up a switch panel and whatnot if you wanted to um, get a little bit of extra power back here. And you could probably tap into this uh, DC outlet and make that full-time power. Plenty of people have done that on the forums and there's a lot of information on it. What's weird is, I don't know if anyone can explain this to me, but when I got this, it did not have the speakers there, but it does have the JBL. And the 04 I had, it had speakers mounted up there and they worked. I tried plugging them in. I took them off the old car and plugged them in and it was not wired up for it. So they didn't play any music. So I don't know what that was about, <coughs> but those were nice to have, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, these mirrors are kind of cool. I don't really use them that often, but they're nice if you're pulling out of spaces, if you head in park and, uh, you want to make sure there's no one behind you when you're pulling out. Okay. So these switch the switches here, this is a push button switch, and this is wired all up into the tailgate. And basically that if you have the door closed and the car is unlocked, it will open the rear hatch. It's kind of annoying if you try to like camp out of the back of these and you want to open the rear hatch. There's no easy way to do it because you have to break all into this paneling. You have to cut away the weather stripping in there. And then you have to pull some weird random lever in a very specific way to get the door to open. Not the best design by Toyota, but you know, it's not too often that you need to do that. And I do like the electric locking tailgate, so can't complain too much. This switch is for the rear window and it also locks and unlocks the car. And you kind of need this if you're gonna be working with the um, push button there, just so that you can unlock the car. So down, unlocks the car and rolls down the window. Up, locks and rolls up the window. So you can see that. It'll go all the way down. I'm just demonstrating. Uh, that's about it back here. Not too much more on the car. Just got, you know, a few cosmetic mods here and there. These switches, so this is for the lights that I installed on the tailgate. That's a pretty cool mod, pretty happy with it. You know, if you're ever sitting out back here at night, very convenient to have that extra lighting around you. Uh, not too hard of a mod. There's some, there's a guy who sells this kit to do the window. And you know, after I figured out how to fish up through the tailgate and whatnot, I figured, hey, let me add some lights in here while I'm at it. So you do have to fish all that up through this wire loom along the side of the tailgate and up into the rear area. It's tedious, but doable. Um, this is just wired up to that light. That's why I have some exposed wires here. It didn't bug me too much. As long as wires are mostly hidden for me, that works, it's fine. Uh, but you know, long-term, I'd like to maybe wire that all the way up through and bring it out cleanly to that light. What else we got? We got a voltage meter back here. You know, just if I have a bunch of things plugged in, if I'm running the lights, just make sure the battery doesn't get too low. Long-term, I would like to add a dual battery system and just run any accessories that I've added off of that instead of the starter battery, just so I don't ever run that flat. And then this is just another USB charger. There's a USB charger in here as well that's tied to this switch. Um, it was pretty nice to have. It's nice for tailgating and whatnot. I do a little bit of tailgating in the summer and eventually maybe some camping in here. And 
yeah, definitely convenient, you know, especially if you're out in the dark. It really lights this up a lot more than the stock lighting options can. But, yeah, that's about it. I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed my little walkthrough. Um, ideally, there's tons of things I would like to do to the car. A lot of it just comes down to, do I want to spend the money? And it comes down to when I have time to do certain mods. But it's a great ride. If you guys are thinking so I've been nothing but happy with this car. It's an awesome ride, great SUV. Toyota really outdid themselves on the fourth gen, in my opinion. I mean, it's there's some bells and whistles on the fifth gens, but for the price, they're a bit expensive still. You know, maybe in you know a few more years they'll come down in price, and maybe I'll move into one of those. But I love my fourth gen. I don't know that I'll ever get rid of this car. You know, always keep it as a little project thing down the road. If you guys are thinking about getting one, highly recommend it get into one just make sure it doesn't have too much rust underneath and it's been decently taken care of um even if it needs a little bit of work you know they're so easy to work on it's a lot of fun to work on these so can't go wrong with the forerunner man get into one get off road go explore have some fun can't go wrong um but yeah hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you have any questions uh leave some comments down below if there's anything I missed that you have interest in, let me know and I can maybe make another video on it. Uh, hopefully going forward, I'll just make some more videos about some slightly more in-depth installs, uh, mods, whatnot. And if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for when I put up some more videos. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.